Top 100 Scary SCPs SCP-3990 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-3998 is to be contained in Secure Holding Locker 3998-1 SHL-3998-1 SHL-3998-1 is to be fireproofed and vacuum sealed to prevent access to oxygen. SCP-3998 and SHL-3998-1 are scheduled for cleaning every day at 9am. If any DCAS personnel spontaneously ignite the sealed to SCP-3998's containment lock must be inspected and repaired slash replaced as necessary. For safety reasons, Site 34 must hold DCAS personnel, particularly those who have been convicted of first-degree murder charges and domestic abuse. If staff are found to have been targeted by SCP-3998, they are to be investigated and then processed. Description SCP-3998 is a human cadaver which expired late 17th century. SCP-3998 lacks any legs and is covered in extensive 40 degree burns. Sometime after its death, SCP-3998 remains collected and fashioned into a scarecrow held together by wicker, nails and wire. Along with its severe burns, SCP-3998 appears to have suffered blunt force trauma to multiple regions of its body. This is unclear if SCP-3998 died as a result from one of the two or both. See Examination 3998-6. The object constantly exudes a flammable liquid from its bones, which is composed primarily of ethanol and human fat. Each night, between 11pm and 4am, SCP-3998 ignites and is engulfed in flames. However, despite being highly flammable, SCP-3998 does not suffer any structural damage. When SCP-3998 is on fire and when not contained properly, the nearest person who meets certain criteria will also spontaneously ignite. SCP-3998 targets those who have killed one or physically abused a romantic partner. If SCP-3998 is unable to ignite itself, SCP-3998 cannot ignite targets. Instead, those who would have been targeted only develop brief, mild pains to either their chest or to the back of their head. As targets are left burning, large quantities of boiling ethanol will appear in their stomach. This large influx of alcohol typically induces vomiting, which causes further external burns and will often cause permanent nerve and organ damage if they survive the initial burning. Eventually, their body fat, particularly in the torso slash stomach region, would begin to melt. The process is extremely rapid, often causing massive internal damage if the target is successfully extinguished before they die of fourth degree burns. If left to burn, the combination of melted fat and ethanol will cause the stomach to violently rupture, often bisecting the victim in the process. Those that SCP-3998 affects cannot be extinguished until SCP-3998 itself is also extinguished. SCP-3998 Documents the following is a partial set of documents and materials related to SCP-3998 as well as related correspondences and articles discovered in the property where SCP-3998 was originally found. These documents may only be viewed by staff with specialized 3998 clearance, the current Site 34 administrator and those with O5 designations. Journal 3998-1 Forward the following are excerpts found in contemporaneous journals from Salem that appear relevant to SCP-3998. Documentary evidence suggests a connection between SCP-3998 and one Candace Hayes, a 17th century resident of Salem. Most were found in basements and attics of historic buildings located near the property SCP-3998 was found. Journal 1 Author Merrill Redacted 1682 we attended the wedding of Ed and Hayes and Candace. Candace seemed rather distraught. The lady's father went through all that trouble to see her married. It would be a shame if she did not appreciate it. Especially with the sirs respected as Ed and Hayes. Journal 2 author, Mary A. Redacted, 1683. Candace has been different. She used to keep her hair tight, but now she's been keeping it long. I see bruises on her often. She's been looking for every excuse to be alone, just so she can went to the forest. Journal 3 author, Marie, redacted, 1683. Something piqued my interest today. Marguerite pointed out how Candace shies from her chores lately and I heard that she might be a bad wife, making Aidan angry. Bruises make sense now. Journal 4 author, Marie, redacted, 1691. 
I was out washing the laundry and I heard Candace shouting at her husband. I went out to ask her what was wrong, but she snapped at me, calling me nosy. The amount of disrespect and scorn in the mistress is remarkable, though to be expected. I have half a mind to complain. Journal 5 author, Mera. Redacted, 1692. I've been hearing some troubling things about Candace lately. Ever since she wed Aidan, she's been wandering off more. Plus, I've heard rumours that her interests are not with men. The devil must have a hold on her. Maybe Aidan will know what to do. I'll just have to tell him tomorrow. Interview 3998-0 Forward The following interview was taken on June 8, 1693 by Judge William Stoughton and the Constables of Salem. Interview has been edited from its original document for clarity. William Stoughton When presented with a warrant for your arrest, you fled immediately. It's this your refusal to speak only until you've been branded and your husband's testimony that places you under suspicion. What do you have to say in your defence? Candace Hayes I have no words for it. I shall not lie, the accusations are true. Stoughton. So you admit to being a witch? And you admit to consorting with the evil spirit? Candace. I do. Although she is not evil in heart. Stoughton. What in the name of God would lead thee down such a path to perform such detestable arts? Candace. They are not detestable. They would work for anyone, be they of God or Satan, or anyone and no one. They are merely a form of tool. Stoughton. You haven't answered the question. Candace. Isn't it obvious? I did not ask to marry, yet I was waved to a bastard in my father's church. He does not respect me, to him I am his property. Stoughton. Just as Lilith has done. That is the woman's place. You only had to be a faithful wife to H. Candice. Quiet. How could I be a faithful to a man I detest? I care only for Clovis, and I'll be damned if I am with anyone but her. It should be my dying wish to see that bastard on his knees and treated as I have. Stoughton. Clovis. Is that the name of the devil that you conjured? It bewitched you. Candice. She bewitched me, but not in the manner you think. Stoughton. It doesn't matter. We have your confession. An exception will be made for a witch as brazen as you. Instead of typical hanging, you shall be burned at the stake. We will see how your Clovis treats you in hell. In the name of our Sovereign Lord and Lady, the King and Queen, may God have mercy on your soul. Candice. So be. Document 3998-3. To the people of this hamlet. An executioner of... A witch. On the dead day of June, 1693. Aidan Hayes has got his wife, Candace, consorting with the devil and one of his evil angels. The evil witch has been justly convicted and shall be put to death by burning. If you are able, come to the centre of town. We need good men willing to stand between Satan's horror and our women and children. His honest, God-fearing man and the victim of this witch has requested to be the one to start the flame himself. Dear Candace, if you are reading this, something has gone wrong. You must be angry, confused, maybe depressed. You've given your soul to me when you were young, and we've been together since. But now that you have died, this means your soul is supposed to be mine now. But I don't want it. I want you. I'm sorry we were caught. I'm sorry for what was done to you over the years. I'm still here for you, even if I'm not here with you. So I brought you back. They put you to the pyre, but I only needed the bones to make you yourself again. I had to remove your flesh, and I couldn't save your legs. They were too far gone. I made do with what was around me. I reaped from the field and wrapped your bones in wicker. You'll have to find a replacement. Speaking of, your husband restocked the shelf with gin, and while you are flammable, fire will only make you stronger this time. You won't be hurt from it ever again. You have the power to make him feel worse than what you felt. Just a thought. Make him wish he could go to hell. I love you and farewell. Tilda Clavis. Document 3998-5. Forward. The following document is an excerpt from an urban legend website regarding an entity called the Wicker Witch. Even supporting evidence, this is hypothesized to be Candace Hayes. The Wicker Witch. There was once a young woman who was wed to a man against her will. She hated the man, but obeyed her father's wishes for her to bear children for his church. An evil spirit saw this and came to her while she was out gathering in the woods. The succubus took her hand and told her I can help you live the life you truly wish to live. You need only to toss this one aside in exchange. Will you take my soul? The woman asked. Yes, said the Shadevil. Will I be rich? The woman asked. You shall have power that money could not hope to provide. The spirit told her. Will I have a real love? The woman asked. The spirit paused. I do not know. The woman pondered the offer and asked one more time, What shall you do with my soul? This surprised the devil, but it kept its composure. It told her it would be consumed. Nothing more, nothing less. The woman accepted and met with the spirit every day for ten years and grew close. 
She bought the spirit berries and trinkets, and it brought her advice and its companionship. It answered her questions and taught her its magics. The woman became a witch, and she used her power to torment her husband the same way he tormented her. One day, her husband followed her and found her shaking the devil's tail. He quietly went back to the town and gathered up a mob. They tied her up to a stake, broke her legs, and hung her up like a scarecrow to burn. They dumped her body down the mountain, but the devil found her to give back her soul. It wrapped her buns and weeds, then used the fire of her soul to keep her alive. But the fire consumed her, and she wanted her old husband to burn with her. In the middle of the night, she doused herself in her old husband's gin and set herself ablaze once again. She dragged her husband out of bed and fell upon him. She burned his face and with her thumb dug his eyes out of his skull. She burned with him till his flesh melted to the floor and the smell could be found all across Salem. She grabbed his legs and pulled and pulled till they came loose so that she could use them to walk again. Only one of them walked out of that burning house and it was her. His body was never found. Some say that the husband futilely crawled out of the wreckage looking for his missing legs. Others say that the witch took his body elsewhere so that she could continue to torture him. But many more say that he's in a hell of the witch's own creation, burning over and over again and bringing those lick. Examination 3998-6 Forward Further examination of SCP-3998 revealed inconsistencies in bone structure slash position suggesting the cadaver is not Candace Hayes as originally thought. Below is a medical report of the findings. Report of investigation by Site 34 Salem, Massachusetts. Decedent. Unknown SCP-3998 race. White sex. Male age. 32. Home address. Redacted MWSD occupation. Unknown. Type of death. Violent, found dead, suspicious, unusual or unnatural. Investigation agency. SCPF, Site 34, Department K. Description of clothing. Unclothed, eyes, unearned hair, black moustache, black beard, black, weight, 5 kg length, 0, 9 m body temp, 30 dig C day in time, redacted, marks and wounds. SCP-3998 has sustained severe damage to its ribs and skull, implying it was hit several times with a blunt object. Fourth degree burns can be found along its torso, arms and skull. Damage around the eye sockets. Legs appear to have been amputated post-mortem and are missing. Probable cause of death. Fourth degree burns or trauma to the skull. Manner of death. Homicide. Addendum 3998-2. After SCP-3998 was contained, there was a noted increase in the number of murders per day in Massachusetts, increasing from 032 to 048. A large portion of these deaths are arson homicides and the victims are known perpetrators of violent crimes. Victims appear covered in extensive fourth degree burns and are gutted from the chest to pelvis. Information on these murders could not be contained due to the corpses being discovered in public displays and being attributed to the Wicker Witch. The public has been led to believe that the perpetrator of these killings is a serial killer using the Wicker Witch legend as an inspiration that the Wicker Witch is fictional and that no witch burnings happened in Salem. Classification to you could pending on the capture and containment of the person responsible. You know, there was more prosecution of witches in Connecticut than there was in Massachusetts. Not sure why Salem became so famous. Maybe due to this abomination. Or not to. I don't know. Thanks for sticking around if you are indeed still here. Comment Jmail if you made it this far. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.